I'm excited to announce the launch of Amazon QuickSight, which is a very fast, easy to use, cloud-powered business intelligence service, which is available in preview today. What the service allows you to do is usually when you actually want to get your first visualization and insight from a product, it takes you know, several weeks, sometimes months, of an engineer doing data modeling. This is very different what QuickSight does. As soon as we recognize an AWS customer, we take all their data that's stored in the various AWS data stores, because so many of our customers are storing data with AWS, and we move it to our, our query engine so that you can get your first visualization within 60 seconds. And then we built what we consider a pretty revolutionary, very innovative, super fast, parallel, in-memory calculation engine, which we call SPICE, that our customers will be able to enjoy much faster query response times than they're used to enjoying. And we also believe that our BI partners will be able to use for their own BI tools to increase the query time for their customers. We also have very beautiful and attractive visualizations that you'll have at your disposal. You have the ability to capture graphs or tables or stories and share them with either internal employees or external folks, if that's what you want to do. The service integrates with all of AWS's data stores, which is important for our customers. And we're offering it at a tenth of the cost of the traditional business intelligence providers. To give you a demo of what QuickSight looks like and show you a little bit more about it, it is my privilege to introduce to the stage the one and only Dr. Matt Wood. Good morning. Thank you, Andy. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's my privilege to talk to you a little bit more about Amazon QuickSight, a lightning fast business intelligence service which aims to bring the power of analytics to you and everybody inside your organization. So as we were building out Amazon QuickSight, we knew we had to make it as easy as possible for customers to be able to work with the large data that they have already stored on AWS. And we focused on that in really three ways. The first was we wanted to make the service as easy as possible to use. And what that entails is the ability to be able to look inside the data sources that are already available in your account on AWS. So Amazon QuickSight will go and, with the right permissions, take a look at data inside Redshift, Amazon RDS, DynamoDB, data that you have stored in Hadoop, in Elastic MapReduce, even flat files that you have stored in Amazon S3. Then, we take a look at not just the sources of that data, but we start to inspect the data types inside that data and look for the relationships between those data types. And what this allows us to do is build up a lot of information and intelligence about the types of data that you're working with. And that allows us to select the best visualization for your data automatically using a technology that we call Autograph. And not only does Autograph make recommendations. We're also just using the uh, tools and the data and the information that we've inferred. We'll make recommendations of not just the types of graphs are the best way to display your data, but the types of variables and data that you want to plot against each other to try and extract that visual visualization and analysis. The second area that we knew we needed to focus on was allow customers to analyze data as quickly as possible. And to do this, we created a custom data layer which is the super fast, parallel, in-memory computation engine, or something that we call SPICE. And what SPICE allows us to do is to collect and compress data in a columnar way and optimize it for in-memory use. Then we take queries and analytic questions that you want to run against that data. We compile them down. We automatically create the machine code, and we run them against that compressed data. And that allows us to do rich multi-pass calculations against the data that is stored in SPICE. It's happened extremely quickly because of these three things of compression, compiled code, which is, goes down to machine code, and then multi-pass calculations. SPICE is also designed to be as extensible as possible, both for us to expand its capabilities over time, but also to allow partners to plug into it over time as well. So you can access SPICE using the Amazon QuickSight user interface. 
but also partners such as Domo, Click, Tableau, and Tibco Jaspersoft can plug directly into Spice and access and run the same queries against your data on AWS. The third area that we knew we needed to focus on was to make it as easy as possible to tell data-driven stories with your colleagues. So what Amazon QuickSight allows you to do is to build and share and collaborate around real live analyses. You can look at these analyses inside the tool. You can also embed them on web pages, on the internet, on public web pages. Uh, you can even embed them inside your, inside your application. You can use the, exactly the same tools to build out live dashboards, so you can collect and aggregate different types of data and different analyses and look at those in real time up on the dashboard. And you can even do all of that on the go with mobile apps, native mobile apps for iOS and Android. So with that, I'd like to ask John to bring up the demo. So what you're looking at here is your first look at Amazon QuickSight. And this is the home page. Here we can see some analyses that we've previously done. And you can see all the different types and graphs of, that are available to us in QuickSight. You can see pie charts and histograms and scatter plots, even heat maps and pivot tables. So what we're going to do is we're going to drill into some retail sales data. And we're going to see what information and discoveries we can make based on that data. So here over on the left-hand side of Amazon QuickSight, you can see all the different data types that are available to us. And the service itself has gone on and extracted those from the data sources along with the relationships between those data types. You can see in the bottom left-hand corner, Autograph automatically recommending the types of visualizations and analyses that we might want to run first. This is really helpful if you're coming to a fresh data set without too much context. And then we can switch tabs and start to look at some of the other data types and visualizations that are available to us. Pie charts, tree maps, and again, bar charts. So this is retail data. You can see just how fast this analysis is. This is running against uh, tens of millions of records of retail data. And you can see here, broken out by category, the number of sales. So the longer the line, the more of a particular product we've sold. And you can see fitness here, and computers, and outdoor equipment. And you can see that John's able to just mouse over and get a summary of that information. So now let's start to dive into this data and see what intelligence we can gather from it. Directly from the visual, without having to write any SQL or any programming, we can start to slice and dice this data. So what we can do is we can focus on just the information that we're interested in. In this case, our top selling category, fitness. Then we can start to segment this out. So we can look at not just the category, but we can start to refine that query and drill into it, looking at the subcategories. So here you can see the weight accessories and turnstiles and monitors that people are buying in the fitness category. Again, we can mouse over, and we can start to drill into this in a bit more detail. So let's add another dimension. This is aggregated sales information, but it's likely that we might be interested in looking at the trends of how these things are selling. So what we can do is we can take a look at these orders over time. And just with a single click, Autograph has changed the graph type. Uh, into a line chart, and here you can see the annual uh, sales for each of these product categories. Extremely easy and extremely automatic. So this gives us an idea of the trends, but let's start to really drill in. So let's get a little bit more granular and move just not from just looking at this year by year, but looking at this month by month. So again, directly inside the visual without any real knowledge of writing the code, we can start to drill into and start to visualize that data in more detail. So here you can see the trends that you might expect to see. We can see a peak uh, around the holiday season as people are buying presents for each other. But over here on the right-hand side, there's a peak that uh, maybe we didn't expect. And so we can take a quick hover over that, and we can see that we had a spike in yoga accessory sales. So let's drive into this and see if we can figure out what the cause of that sale was. We can focus in on that just that one piece of data. We can remove all the extraneous information so we can just focus on that one piece of information that we're interested in. We can restrict that query, not just looking at all of the information, but starting to zoom in on just the year uh, by just adding a filter, just a single click. And then we can add granularity to that information, again, directly from the visual, not looking month by month, but looking week by week. And now that spike that we saw earlier is becoming really, really clear. We had a great week in the middle of April for yoga accessories. So let's see if we can find the root cause for this. Now we can start to overlay additional information and look at this same data through the lens of marketing promotions. So our question is really, did the marketing promotions we ran have any impact on sales? An age-old question. 
So as we start to add in the promotion data, you can start to see that, yes, the sales that have been attributed to the marketing promotion that we ran around Spring Fitness. And so we can see here that from a standing start, in probably less than about 90 seconds, we've gone from the data, we've sliced and diced it, we've segmented it, and we started to drive real intelligence that are going to be really useful to our business. In fact, I think that this is going to be so useful that I probably want to be able to share it around my organization. So we built in these sharing capabilities directly inside Amazon QuickSight. So with a single click, we can go ahead and we can capture not just a snapshot of the data, but the live data that this is running against. And we can put that into a storyboard. And that storyboard allows us to build an interactive document uh, which tells a data-driven story in much the same way as I've been able to do with you here today. And I can share this with my colleagues internally. I can have them interact with, change the axes, query the data, and then tell the same story uh, with the data to get the, the same results. So you can see here, Spring Fitness again. And again, these are not snapshots. These are interactive queries, which we could go ahead and embed on our intranet, inside our applications, or even publish onto the public website. So with that, I'd like to thank you very much. I can't wait to see what you all do with Amazon QuickSight. Thank you.